Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Infection Free Zone. On today's episode, we are going to be taking you on a tutorial trip. Let's call it the Infection Free Zone Bootcamp. And we will teach you everything you need to know about the game for the upcoming launch of the game on April 11. I just want to thank every single one of you guys for watching my videos. And I know I haven't been uploading much, but I'm trying to adjust my time so I can upload daily, but it's not working that well. Uh, so yeah, please bear with me while I set up my schedule well so we can go ahead and enjoy making content for Infection Free Zone. So on today's video, we are going to be talking about uh, the basic tutorial and how to do everything and explain all the buildings, the defenses, the walls, all the weapons that are available in the game and we'll see how everything goes. So usually when you start the game, you don't have all of these buildings available. You only have this central building called the HQ. Now this building is really unique as it does three purposes uh, in the game. First, it provides a the starter living capacity, uh, or let's call it, let's call them beds for your survivors. Usually, uh, the is uh, you can start with 30, 40, or 50 survivors. Usually, go with 50 at the start because the game is still not finished and you need and there's still a lot of a lot of missing content. So playing it on harder difficulty is not that viable and not that fun. So. As we said, as we explained, uh, if you can see the mouse, uh, it says uh, living quarters capacity 16, and I already have like 300 uh, civilians, uh, 350 civilians active, okay? And you can also have a resource capacity. This building by itself uh, may provide around 350, 317 capacity, and each warehouse will also provide extra capacity for your uh, storage, and all of them are linked together. So again, this building can uh, give you beds, give you resource capacity as in storage, act as a warehouse, and also act as a spot to recruit squads. Now, the most important thing in the game is squads as they are your, let's call them the sword that will defend your zone. And they can also act a shield to defend you against raiders and possible other events in the game. Now, this is your HQ. Your second building that you really should uh, worry about and build is the research center. The research center is the one responsible uh, for research. As you can see on the top left of your screen, you have a objectives, you have research panel, and you have weather forecast. You should build the research center so you can start getting all these technologies added into the game. Usually after you build it, you should go for the basic antenna and after you go for the basic antenna you are free to do whatever you want just depends on the situation you're in after that you have the other building that i'm going to showcase is the med bay this is one of the other buildings that is really important to the game uh, it provides hp generation per hour to your survivors and it could heal up your server uh, your uh, your workers and your civilians to uh, maximum uh, health and keep them in good uh, conditions and it can also produce uh, medical kits uh, first aid kits that will help help you keep your squads alive on missions you also have the weather forecast center this weather forecast center is really simple and unique uh, what it does is as you can see on the top left you have these three sections uh, when you select weather forecast it produ uh, predicts the forecast so every one depends and have its own buffs. For example, on June, uh, which is day three, if you if it is full moon with a clear sky causes the infected to stay indoors during the night. So basically, if you have a full moon night, okay, the infected will stay in their houses. So keep an eye on this tab for future uh, forecast. There is also others that keep the infected, let the infected attack during the day. So yeah, keep an eye on it and Good luck with your survivors. Now, you have in the game, uh, currently we have two types of houses or housing units. We have the shelter, which is the very basic that doesn't give any type of boost to your survivors. And you have the house that is a more unique, luxurious house that will provide happiness to your survivors. As you can see, uh, if you have shelters, uh, the shelters will act as a debuff and they will uh, they will not provide any uh, mood bonuses, but the house does provide a mood bonus. Okay, now we have the warehouses. As explained, a warehouse size depends on the building that you select it in. For example, if I go to my building panel on the building menu on the top 
top uh, bottom left sorry and you select a warehouse as you can see this one this one provides 232 storage capacity this one 254 this one 289 etc it keep increasing for example we have this big building may provide 2000 uh this one 700 uh and so on it depends on the size of the building that you can select uh, this goes for all buildings all buildings will need a specific amount of resources to establish if the sizes of the buildings are bigger for example if you go to this one this building is 16 will provide 16 living quarters but will cost 22 wood this one uh, for example let's select a bigger one uh, this one will give you 18 but it will cost 26 wood for example this big one will provide 57 uh, but it will need 77 wood this one will give you 162 but it will need to 18 wood and etc this is all for all the buildings including production including uh, research centers for example the research center uh, the bigger building gives you uh, enough to put 27 workers in the building but it will cost 55 wood and 68 uh, metal so yeah it really takes quite a lot uh, other than that you have the uh, food production buildings you have the cookhouse which is one of the main uh, resources to cook food and prepare the food from the basic resources you have you have two basic resources uh, grains which come from farms each farm produce uh, three grain on the basic if you research uh, if you research you can make this four and also if you add fertilizer the filter fertilizer will allow you to produce nine grain on the same amount of time usually it takes around 17 or 15 hours for each uh, crop uh, farm plot to produce farms and if you have happiness the time will decrease and if you have uh, a debuff uh, negative mood and uh, debuff from temperature it will also decrease the time needed when the temperature is super cold you will not have any food produced uh, for the barn it uses grain to produce both fertilizer and it will produce meat and from that you can all these build, all these resources will go into the kitchen cookhouse and they will be produced into warm meals uh, also uh, let's go to production you have four types of productions you have arms factory chemical plant tools factory and a cannery cannery is a form of production that will allow you to produce canned food uh, canned food is a food that does not spoil basically it has uh, preservatives on it so in the future they'll add a mechanic that allows food to spoil so keep in mind uh, about that in the future so you can produce cannery it all multiplies basically the cooked meals uh, cooked meals uh, produce like for example you can produce four meals from here and then go to the cannery and these two meals will produce three so from the four meals you got you can produce six and etc and you'll need that form of uh, production and line like assembly line for example to produce and multiply your food for future uh, survive for future zones because your survivors will consume a lot of food like the food is one of the major problems in the game uh, other than wood uh, also you have your tools factory which will produce tools which are uh, essentially needed to produce farms and many other buildings you have your chemical plant which can transform wood into fertilizer uh, fertilizer into fuel uh, wood into fuel fuel into fertilizer uh, you also have your arms factory which can produce ammunition and the available for different type of weapons you have pistols assault rifle shotgun and a sniper rifle also you have your one of your unique antennas uh, one of your unique buildings this is the best building into the game or let's call it a monument uh, you build this one to give get the ability to recruit uh, people into your zone after you build it and finish the quest and let's go to the wall section now there is currently three different type of walls and three different type of gates uh, one second let me just uh, yeah, do this okay so now you have your wooden palisade uh, these are the basic uh, weakest wooden structure uh, wall defense available uh, they each wall section or segment have about 400 hp which will be taken out in pretty fast and your second upgrade is a metal fence which will obviously use only metal you have around 750 hp this one will last a bit longer but also a it is a very weak form of defense and then you have your strongest wall it is the fortified wall they have 2000 hp uh, for each segment these are the best you can get and my recommendation for everybody is to try and get these walls as soon as possible if you are having troubles with the infected 
you also can get uh, gates for these walls. You have the wooden gate. It has 3,500 3, HP. It is very weak. It can only house four uh, workers or guards, let's call them, that can shoot from there. You can either give them assault rifles, pistols, or bows and arrows. You have the metal, which have 6,000 HP. Also, the ammo is all the same. Uh, again, same thing. You can have four workers, uh, bows and arrows, pistols, or assault rifles. Now, for the fortified gate, you can have 18,000 HP. Uh, the ammo stays the same, but you have six workers. They can all uh, either get ARs, pistols, or bows and arrows. Uh, same thing for the walls. Uh, the wooden towers uh, have 2,000 HP and only two workers. The metal towers have 5,000 HP and two workers. For the fortified ones, you have 11,000 HP and three workers. All the weapons are the same. You also have some sort of defense that allows you to slow down and damage the infected uh, just a tiny bit. Literally just scratches them and gives them like 1% HP damage if they stay in it per second or per tick. You have the barbed wires. These are meant uh, for you to slow down the infected while they're trying to uh, amb uh, try to charge your walls so you can have enough time to deal damage to them and take them out. Now, all that has been explained about the buildings. Now, I'm going to teach you how to build uh, all these buildings. Now, if you look at the bottom of your screen, bottom left, you have all these icons. Now, the citizen panel, which is the first thing we are going to explain, is the one that allows you to manage your survivors. Instead of uh, uh, manually clicking on each building and assigning workers, uh, you can just do that in a bunch. If you have workers, for example, I can take out all the guards from the buildings. As you can see, they will just leave all these towers and I can send them back in instantly with one click, they will go. For example, the factory, I can just press zero here and they will all leave the factories, send them back in. Same thing for the farms, all these workers will leave and etc. So this is one of the most important panels that you need to keep an eye out as it will help you micromanage your uh, safe zone and keep it safe at all time. Instead of selecting, for example, at every tower and assigning workers to it, you can just hit zero on one of these and assign everybody to guarding now to gather resources you have three forms of gathering resources uh, sorry four forms one is uh, gathering uh, the normal way like for example i, I want to gather metal i can press here gather metal and it will gather all of these uh, same thing that goes for wood same thing that goes for bricks uh, let me see if there is there any brick resources around uh, yeah there is bricks here all these bricks, etc. Second one is you can deconstruct buildings. If you go into any of these buildings uh, that are available, you can deconstruct them. If you press the hammer on the right section, you can deconstruct it. If you want to adapt it, you can press this adapt building and select, or you can just go ahead and select the building that you want to adapt. For example, research center. It will show you what resources it needs and boom, done. Uh, the second way for you, uh, the third way to gather resources is hopefully from the expedition. You zoom out of the map, you can see these squares that have these question marks. Possibly in the future, you will be able to gather loot from them and possible resources. And also for from maybe missions or traders, We this is not confirmed, but hopefully we get something unique into the future. Uh, now, also for uh, very basic controls when you are building any building, for example, let's let us select the tower. Here, let us select the biggest tower so we can actually see. Uh, as you can see on the bottom section of your map, uh, of your screen, you can have uh, the controls. Uh, left click is for placing, uh, moving the mouse is for rotation. Uh, you can cancel with right click. And if you want to rotate the building, you can go ahead and press X and Z. Yes, this uh, game uses X and Z for rotation. Uh, most games usually use Q and E, but Q and E are for rotating your screen. So just keep an eye on the controls. These controls are available for everything you select, mostly everything you select. For example, if I select a squad, it gives you, it shows you the moves, select, attack, move, Q orders, select multiple, etc. If you want to select multiple squads, you can go ahead and press on the HQ or press on this icon on the uh, right corner, top right corner. You can go select and create multiple squads, etc. Or just do it from the HQ. As you can see, my HQ is very small currently, so I can only have five squads. And if you want to select multiple squads, you can go ahead and press Control and select all of them. And you can send them to anywhere you want. Let me just select all of them again, just to showcase this. Okay, sec. 
press this and control yeah and it will select most of the squads that you want you can also do it from the bar here from the tab when their icons are available but they will stack over each other and when they stack over each other you might not see the items very well now to loot these to loot buildings you select a squad and you hit right click on a building and they will go ahead and scavenge it the more squads are per building the faster the looting will be for example we'll show you as you can see these guys are looting pretty fast and this one is looting pretty slow because he is single guy it is a single squad and that is looting this compound now when your squads are done looting usually they will appear with resources on them however uh, not every bit building have resources but buildings with like unique icons like for example this one that allows you to have pistols will give you guaranteed resources at maybe not weapons it will only give you ammo maybe only weapons not ammo but it will give you guaranteed resources same thing that goes with this unique library building it is guaranteed to give you a scientific material this one is guaranteed to give you food uh, this one is guaranteed to give you tools for example uh, let's see yeah this one is guaranteed to give you medical uh, drugs equipment etc uh, what else anything unique yeah the fuel uh, this one will give you the fuel or car parts in the future hopefully and uh, this one will obviously give you fuel as you can see as well this building this icon is a petrol station or some sort of uh, fuel generation spot that will give you fuel you can also have bakeries uh, or farms that will give you grain like this unique icon they they have added this this looks like a weed i think <laughs> or some sort of grain type maybe corn i'm not really sure it's abstracted yeah this one can give you a bag of grains etc and the buildings you can also get findable resources so do not worry that you will get you will get the ability to acquire a lot of weapons and a lot of things from even the buildings that don't have the unique icons now, uh, one unique thing is that the game depends on resources that you can gather. Uh, you need the resources to play the game, and these resources are really, really, really hard to come by. So I suggest when you start the game, you create the maximum amount of squads available, and you send your workers to gather wood and build shelter and gather metal uh, every resource available and send your workers to scavenge for food food is a really necessity for your workers as you can see i have quite a lot of civilians spawned in and i don't have enough food to feed them if i don't feed them my mood will keep going in the negative until all of them uh, die from receiving damage because they have not eaten any uh, anything okay so uh, I want to thank every single one of you guys for watching this tutorial. Uh, this is a very basic tutorial uh, for the game as the game has not been finished yet. However, if you need, if you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord and ask me. And you can ask me also in the comment section down below. I want to thank every single one of you for watching this video. And hopefully we'll see you again next time. Stay safe, guys, and blazer out.